Chief Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this CUBE Conversation. You know, in our last breaking analysis, we worked with ETR and they put out a new forecast on IT spending for 2020. The consensus coming into 2020 was for a 4% increase. Based on the survey that work they've done with CIOs, it's now down to 0%. Surprisingly, about 40% of the CIOs and IT practitioners that they interviewed said they expected no change in IT budget for 2020. And a, a, a surprising 21% say they actually expect to increase spending as a result of work from home infrastructure. Still a very large portion of the survey sample said they're going to decrease spending and that's why they're now calling, ETR is calling for a flat spending in 2020. Clearly one of the challenges are those companies that are exposed to supply chain disruptions, whether it's manufacturing or retail or certain CPG or industrial. And with me today to talk about specifically supply chain within the storage market and within Pure Storage is Mike Fitzgerald, who's the VP of operations at Pure. Mike, thanks so much for coming on and talking about this important topic. Oh, thank you, Dave. Good to see you at good afternoon and good morning. So, Take us through what you're seeing. Uh, well, first of all, what's your role? VP of operations, you're in charge of supply chain, is that correct? Yeah, I have uh, all of the supply chain, all of the manufacturing, logistics, distribution network uh, at Pure. So what's going on with, uh, what are you seeing in the industry, talking to your colleagues? I'm sure you're you know, discussing this with your peers. Give us the high level and the macro, and then we'll get into what's going on with Pure specifically. Well, well certainly there, you know, Within early January, we started to hear whispers out of, uh, out of the Far East that there were going to be some potential implications with the supply chain. So at that point in time, we, we did a lot of actions and activities at Pure to, to try to stay ahead of that, uh, with speed being one of the key things that we wanted to make sure we were, we were focusing on. But, uh, but the industry as a whole, uh, there was a lot of focus over the last several months in how do we make sure that not only do we understand what our risk is in the Far East slash China, but how do we mitigate that risk? And then uh, as, as, you know, as we've transpired and things have gotten, gotten to where we are now, is, is the risk has become more of a global risk in terms of a supply chain management role. So is it really, was it the exposure to, to China? Was it really NAND supply that you, cause that's been sort of zigging and zagging for the last, you know, several periods. You know, what, can you give us a little bit more color on, on really what you were paying attention to in terms, terms of some of those hotspots? Yeah, well, one of the things we tried to do early on is uh, our, the design of our supply chain at Pure. Uh, we've tried to diversify that. We, we've got a portfolio-based uh, footprint across the globe. Uh, early on, uh, we, we took a lot of steps to minimize the amount of reliance on China. A lot of that was driven by tariff implications but certainly it's become, uh, become our friend as we've gotten into the situation with the COVID. Uh, so a lot of actions and activity in that space to make sure that we've got a responsive supply chain in place from a global perspective. On, on the NAND, uh, the, the, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of actions and activities in relationship to NAND, uh, certainly with, with the rising price, uh, the market demands, what's going on with the, the supply versus demand ratios, but, one of the things that we're, we have a huge advantage of at Pure is that we build our own SSDs. So NAND is a, is a component, is what we're buying, which is not directly related to what I would call China shortages. A lot of the NAND is not built in China that we, that we consume and put into our SSDs. So are you saying that Pure is not having any kind of supply chain disruption or you're managing that? Um, uh, you know, what are you doing there specifically and how much of that is just sort of reduced demand versus so your uh, approach to supply chain? Can you address that? Yeah, we're, we are not seeing a reduced demand right now. And one thing, uh, kind of an overarching statement is, uh, we, we have plenty of supply available right now. Uh, we are, our, our entire portfolio is at standard lead time. And so we've got, uh, we've got product in place. As a matter of fact, we've seen an uptick in some of the demand uh, streams, specifically in BDI, uh, as well as in pure as a service or less human element, the BDI certainly for the work from home type of scenarios. So we're uh, we're we're actually uh, seeing seeing what I would call more of an increase in demand 
with shorter lead times, driving us to put uh, put product on site in emergency situations. That's interesting because a lot of suppliers that I've talked to have said, look, we, we, we are going to manage this by communicating uh, uh, increased lead times to our customers. You're saying Pure is actually seeing the opposite. You've got good supply and you're seeing strong demand and you're able to meet either on time or even at an accelerated pace. Did I get that right? Yeah, ab absolutely, Dave. Uh, actually, over the last three days, the weekend, uh, we, we've had three three separate installs in, in the locations on an emergency basis where we've uh, we've responded in less than 24 hours and gotten product on site installed and, uh, and saved the uh, customers from running into situations where their, their work from home staff was not able to uh, come up. You know, Mike, um, you've obviously got a lot of experience in, in this space, operations and supply chain. Uh, you've, you've done this for a while. Uh, Pure as a company does a lot of things differently. I've been following them since the early days of, of Pure, but I have to be honest, I've never really dug in to Pure's supply chain you know, approach and any differentiation you have there. How would you compare Pure's approach to others that you've seen in the industry, uh, maybe either historically or what you're seeing today uh, what are you guys doing that's different? Yeah, well, we, we've designed our supply chain uh, to be a responsive supply chain uh, with the recognition we're, we're growing, you know, roughly 20% year over year. Uh, we're, we're leaning into the supply chain to be able to not only enable that growth, but to be able to enable surge. So some of the things that we do in, in designing the responsive supply chain, we talked earlier about making sure we have the right manufacturing footprint and that we've got the right risk mitigation so that we can we can have that portfolio approach related to diversity in the in this footprint. But we we've, we've actually staged material in the supply chain intentionally to enable us to be able to uh, surge in response to demand increases. We've done the same with capacity. So uh, we've actually leaned into our network and increased capacity to be able to uh, absorb surges uh, in in demand which is certainly paying off for us now in this situation where early on in January, uh, we started seeing the signs that, uh, that we were going to have some demand constraints. So, so we went out and placed, uh, placed buys. Uh, we went long is probably the best way to put it and, and tried to make sure that we were stocking up accordingly so that if indeed there was a, a constraint that happened or a constraint, constrained environment that we had product available and that's what's paying off for us right now. Mike, is that a brute force decision-making process? In other words, is it more gut feel from your tribal knowledge and experience at this? Are you using analytics in any way to inform sort of where to turn those knobs? Uh, well, it's a little, a little of both, Dave. Uh, some of it is, you know, I, I've been in this game for a while. I've seen these before. Uh, so we, we knew early on that it was, it was time to pull the trigger. Uh, so we did. Uh, one of the advantages we've got at Pure is we're a small team, we're a nimble team. Uh, decisions can be made today and implemented this afternoon. And uh, that's basically the way that we did it. We, you know, we, we got the right stakeholders together. We made some conscious decisions on what we were going to do to try to mitigate the risk going forward, pull the trigger, and, uh, and, and, and now we have, we have supply available and, uh, and we continue to shift. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about, come back to that uh, VDI. I mean, as I said at the top of this, we saw from the ETR survey data that work from home was one of the few areas that was really you know, uh, uh, picking up. And it wasn't just video conferencing, it was you know, VPN, it was networking bandwidth, it was security infrastructure to support that work from home uh, uh, capability, et cetera. Uh, and obviously VDI is is part of that. I wonder if you could you could talk a little bit more about that, not only in terms of what you're seeing for your for your customers, but what what is Pure doing? And just in terms of you know remote support and other things, where are you focused there? Yeah, well, uh, two things. I'll talk about the VDI solution. We we've got solutions uh, certainly that we're offering into the marketplace. We, as I said earlier, a significant uptick in demand. Um, and I think many would say that storage is the backbone of a, an, an effective VDI solution, and that's what we that's what we do for a living. Um, we've also uh, got several different solutions that that we're, we're implementing or having customers implement to, to simplify uh, the implementation of the VDI. You know, one of our one of our key things is we're, we're simple, we're easy, uh, we can put things in place quickly. Uh, as I said, we're we're, we're loading uh, data centers in hours versus days. The other question, Dave, about the, the support 
and I'll, I'll, I'll view that in, in two different areas. One, the implementation of existing product uh, or the support related to that. Our support network is 100% up and running right now. We have we have componentry. We've actually forward stock incremental uh, componentry into the uh, the depots. To make sure that we're able to support our, our key customers. One of the one of the models we've got is we're an essential uh, business that is in in the business of supporting other essential businesses, critical infrastructure, focusing on that to make sure that if for some reason we lose a logistics channel in the country, that we've got components there so that the support infrastructure stays in place and we're able to keep our customers up and running. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about some of the assumptions that you're making here. I mean, we have, we have a saying sometimes, hope for the best, plan for the worst. In your business, that's you know probably apropos. What are some of the assumptions Absolutely. you're making just in terms of uh, you know, planning for the worst? Well, we're, we're, we're doing, uh, you know, early on, it was all about making sure that you could get line of sight on supply and uh, making sure that we've got capacity available. We, we, were, we did a lot of work on making sure that our alternate sites across the globe were able to absorb what we couldn't get out of our China suppliers uh, for the time being when, 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 that, uh, when we had the constraints there. But at the same time, uh, we are now recognizing uh, as the, the COVID expands, the COVID, excuse me, the, the, the incidents that we're in right now, that uh, there may be some demand delay uh, or demand destruction in the future. So what is our risk profile in relationship to that? So that's something we're doing as well, but right now we're more focused on what is it going to take to make sure that we've got supply available for the customers that need supply now. So what are the, I mean, I'm sure you had a lot of KPIs, but if you had to really focus in on the top ones, the, the, the two or three that you're really focused on that kind of, you know, you, you look at every morning when you, when you wake up, wh wh where, are you, where is your focus in terms of KPIs? We're, right now, it's, it, it's a little, we're in a different environment than, than, than we were in, let's say three months ago. And right now it's product availability uh, and that's in, in responsiveness to customer needs. Uh, in a normal environment, I would say it's cost, quality, and delivery. That's a typical supply chain mantra, the, the three legs of the stool. But right now, uh, certainly we're not, uh, we're not minimizing the impact of, of having to have excellent quality. But, but what we're really focused on now is making sure that we are providing product into critical infrastructure, essential customer sites. Uh, so it's all about availability. I would say the majority of my day is, is focusing on what do we need to do to make sure we've got product available for the marketplace. Well, Mike, we're seeing, you know, the people around the world, um, not only in the United States, but, but globally respond to this crisis. We're all doing our own part. You know, clearly you're, I, I, I assume before you were waking up, that assumes you were sleeping and I know you're not getting much sleep, but I want to thank you for coming on and sharing with us some of the, some of the, the, the things that are going on with, with Pure. You know, keep up the great work. Your customers need this. I mean, storage is, storage is part of critical infrastructure. And uh, and really appreciate you know all the effort. So thanks to you and all the team at, at Pure. Well, thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. It's great to have you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll keep broadcasting here daily from the Cube Studios. This is Dave Vellante. For this Cube conversation. We'll see you next. Time.